Hello, everyone. I'm Natalia Tokunovskaita from Lithuanian Research Center of Agriculture and Forestry, and my background is in chemistry, but my PhD was done in agronomy science, so I'm trying to combine these two different sciences together. Uh, short introduction about uh, why waste, why to reuse, to recover or recycle them. So as the human population globally increases, together the, the growing industrialization and urbanization, they generate more solid waste, which is important to utilize them. Uh, and uh, which waste are actually rich in nutrients? And uh, why to focus on recovery of nutrients from waste? Because natural resource is, scarcity is, is going on. And uh, as sustainable handling and uh, of uh, industrial solid waste uh, is important because it can be environmental friendly to find the way how to uh, minimize the harmful substances for humans or for environment. And it allows to reduce the use of natural resources. Um, like especially phosphorus is, is kind of crucial today and phosphorus and potassium, they are uh, scores from uh, 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 from the, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. from mineral deposits and they are non-renewable non and uh, becoming progressively limited with a supply of these certain nutrients. But the waste is rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which can be used in agriculture. So today I will talk about three different works. One main thing in all is biofuel ash, just different applications of biofuel ash. On the first study, we tried to extract the beneficial nutrients from biofuel ash. In the second, we identify from which uh, combustion plant parts, the best to use biofuel ash in agriculture or as an uh, additive in uh, civil engineer. And in the third uh, work, I will discuss uh, how, to, uh, how the biofuel ash can help to recover phosphate from simulated wastewater. So the first work is recovery of nutrients from biofuel ash via organic acid facilitated solid liquid extraction. So on this study, we explored three different organic acids such as salicylic acid, citric acid, and uh, oxalic acid on the recovery of beneficial elements from biofuel ash. Uh, why these three organic acids? Uh, these three organic acids uh, is released to the soil by plants, bacteria, or fungi. So we choose to test them. And most of the recent studies, which are focusing on extraction uh, elements from biofuel ash, we use strong inorganic acid, and they give good recovery of them, but still high concentration of heavy metals is released to the solution. So talking about the results, the what we got after this uh, experiment, the highest concentration of uh, phosphorus was extracted after 30 minutes by using citric acid. Uh, also very similar, around 81% of phosphorus was extracted to the filtrate when we used oxalic acid, but the extraction time was six times longer. Uh, moving on about the uh, potassium recovery, uh, uh, Around 8%, which was the highest recovery used uh, for all the nutrients with dionized water, we were able to recover 8% of it. And it shows that just uh, very small potassium is in the ashes in the water soluble salts. Uh, the salicylic acid uh, gave around 35 or to 37% recovery after one hour and after three hours. Uh, but the highest recovery was obtained with oxalic acid, it, and it was around 57%. Uh, when we talk about calcium recovery, so uh, the highest was uh, with citric acid after two hours. So around 82% was released to the filtrate and just 18% of uh, calcium uh, was left in the solid part. Moving back, uh, 
And that when we tried to extract with oxalic acid, we found out that it's, of course, precipitate as insoluble calcium oxalates. Uh, talking about magnesium, it shows the same pattern as calcium. So uh, it can it can tell us that it's uh, magnesium in the biofuel ashes is incorporated in the same compounds as as calcium, and the best recovery was uh, obtained using citric acid after two hours of the extraction, and it reached uh, close to seventy five percent. During this work, we also wanted to see how these uh, acids extract the heavy metals, which biofuel ash is rich in them. So most of heavy metals were close to zero or below the limit of detection, just zinc, iron, and aluminum. We were able to, to measure after the extraction in the liquid phase, and the concentrations is not so high, as you can see in the figure. So the from this work, we found out that citric acid was selected as an optimal leachant for beneficial nutrients to extract all together, but not release the high contents of heavy metals in the solution. Uh, our second work, which we done in collaboration with Kolnas University of Technology was funded by the governmental funds and uh, the task for that work was to try to identify the which biofuel ash is best for agriculture and for civil engineering. So we collect lots of samples from different uh, combustion plants and from different locations in there. So the biofuel ash were collected from electrostatic filter, from cyclone and from common tank where these uh, were mixed together. After analyzing chemical composition, uh, we found out just the biofuel ashes from cyclone uh, is uh, it can be suitable to use in agriculture to, to make uh, fertilizer products because they do not exceed the maximum allowable limits of heavy metals. Both which were taken from the common tank, they was the highest nutrient content in them. But uh, in some cases, uh, the uh, heavy metal concentration exceed the maximum allowable limits. But uh, the uh, partners, they found out that it's good to use them in the seal engineering as an additional simultaneous material because they have really good calcium oxide and silicon dioxide ratio. But those who uh, was taken from electrostatic filter, they was not suitable neither for civil engineering, neither for agriculture. They had too high the ratio of calcium oxide and silicon dioxide and they exceeded the maximum allowable limits most in all elements. Uh, uh, we were curious to see how these uh, from different spots, uh, what ecotoxicity effect they have on the seeds. And, and we prepared the extracts by extracting by two, four and 24 hours, the biofuel ashes from different uh, uh, locations. And we found out that uh, when those who are taken from uh, cyclone uh, has very good germination rate, same as uh, control, which were germinated in the ionized water, the, after 10 days, the germination was around 80%. For those who, who was taken from electrostatic filter, the germination rate was the lowest. Uh, also, uh, we checked the spent coffee ground leachate because later we tried to pelletize the biofuel ash together with spent coffee grounds. And after the germination test, we measured the spring wheat root and shoot length. And we saw that uh, the seedlings uh, who was germinated in the extract of uh, biofuel ash, which were taken from uh, electrostatic filter, has the shortest uh, root and shoot lengths. Uh, the second part of that work was to pelletize these biofuel ashes together with spent coffee grounds. Why spent coffee grounds? Because lots of the coffee, to drink coffee is very popular and lots of cafeterias in the cities, they produce as a waste these uh, spent coffee grounds. 
Uh, so, and the spam coffee grounds has higher concentration nitrogen, which is not in the ash. So we were able to exchange 12% uh, uh, biofuel ash by spam coffee grounds because it was difficult to palletize these two materials together by using just dionized water. And uh, we, we performed this work using the simple hand press. It was the, like the, uh, the strength was just doing by the hand. And uh, we, do, we did the short uh, pot experiment, let's say 28 days. Uh, for that experiment, we grow spring, uh, spring wheat and we tested uh, our produced pellets. We chose the fertilization rate uh, 40 kilograms per hectare calculated by the phosphorus. It is maximum allowable rate which we can apply in Lafina, but we also was interesting to see what happens if we uh, reduce the rate uh, by 50% and also what will happen if we increase the rate by 50%, so 20 kilograms per hectare and 60 kilograms per hectare. As a control, we didn't fertilize at all and we used uh, 40 kilograms uh, as a bulk ash and the spent coffee grounds. So from this experiment, we found out that there are no significant differences in root and shoot length, just uh, the higher shoot and root length was determined after using bulk biofuel ash, which is, uh, makes sense because they are uh, small particles and they will release nutrients easier. The uh, same trend is with root and shoot mass. So now about, I will talk about the third work, which we was uh, done together with Jonas Volchushaitis in, in, during my internship in his lab. Uh, we used biofuel ash and lime kill dust as an adsorbent to remove phosphate from simulated wastewater. <coughs> uh, in sim uh, we prepared simulated wastewater solution, which contains 500 ppm of phosphate and 100 ppm of ammonia. And uh, we add some organic acids because uh, wastewater does not contain just pure nutrients. We have some additives and one of them is some organic like compounds. Uh, we performed like 12 tests, screening tests, which uh, from 200 ppm to, to 2,200 ppm of uh, additive uh, lime kiln dust and biofuel ash and we found out that if we increase the concentration of the, of the landfill dust and biofuel ash, the recovery uh, also increased. So overall, uh, we were able to remove by 95% of phosphate using 1,800 ppm of landfill dust and around 78% uh, phosphate was removed and used 2,200 ppm of, uh, lime, of biofuel ash. Uh, and the most uptake of phosphate is done in the 15 minutes, and later <coughs> it uh, slows down. But we also was curious to see what happens if we um, perform the experiment by adding organic acids and to see maybe they will slow the process or maybe they will uh, make it faster. So uh, the organic acid present in the Simulated wastewater solution like citric and oxalic acid, they inhibited the process and the higher the concentration of organic acid added to the, to the solution, the higher in inhibition effect. Uh, while glycolic acid did not, infl uh, did not have the same effect, it, it did not uh, inhibit it. Uh, but oxalic acid and uh, has very strong inhibition effect uh, when we try to absorb uh, phosphate using biofuel ash. In general, the landfill dust, biofuel ash, they are generated in high uh, quantities, but they contain uh, major nutrients, but together with heavy metals, so we need to be aware of if we're leaching them to the environment or, or no. So our studies, which we do with organic acid, did not show the uh, high release of heavy, heavy metals in there. 
I would like to acknowledge the group which we are working, also Professor Anand Bolshevikis and for the funding to USDA.